obviously why wouldn't there be a technical issue of course there's a technical issue it's just a day of the week there's always a technical issue so we've got um, a video to play um, first um, and this video is recorded was recorded um, uh, last week at the end of last week and it's um, it's Matthew Gould who um, is a name some of you might recognise he's the chief executive of NHS X um, and is homeschooling um, to her children alongside that very busy job and then hopefully fingers crossed so we know that one works hopefully then we're going to cut to some videos um, of uh, three other people, Eve Russell, um, who is Head of Workforce Transformation at NHS uh, England, um, David Newey, who is um, a CIO at the Royal Marsden, and Tom DePass, who is Director of Comms at NHS South Central and West. Now, I'm hoping they work. They might not work. Let's see what happens. Um, and we're used to chaos, aren't we? Most of us are used to chaos. Um, and then at the end of this session, at sort of 11.45ish, we've got um, Dr um, Nikki uh, Kanani, who is um, the Director of Primary Care at NHS England and a GP. So a huge job. Um, she's also a mum of two and hopefully she's going to come in and join us um, live for a bit of a chat at the end of this session. Um, so uh, in the middle of that, we're going to do a Q&A and a bit of a chat about um, homeschooling, the sort of the good, the bad and the ugly, um, a bit around what would help you with homeschooling, what employers can do to help and support people, you know, tangible things, if, if um, we can think of any, um, any sort of hints and tips for sharing, kind of getting through the day um, and um, and sort of troubles and woes and, you know, what you're worried about and what we might be able to do um, to um, address some of those worries. So just very quickly, I suppose I should say a bit about me. I'm not homeschooling my three children um, this time around. They are going to school, um, to their primary school. They're all at the same primary school. They are 10, um, 8 and 5. Um, we did last time. It, it was a, it was really, really, really difficult um, and um, challenging. And um, for all the reasons that you'll all be familiar with, just trying to um, work and do that is really tough. And actually, my kids all found it really hard. Um, so my eldest um, found it OK, I think, you know, she's a bit older and she um, kind of got on with stuff, could work fairly independently on her own. My middle child was just not interested at all and really suffered not seeing his friends, actually really, really suffered um, and was quite badly affected. And my, my youngest just didn't bother doing anything at all. So it was his reception year. And um, I think for him, he's he, he he's just kind of lost a year, I suppose, really, and is basically kind of started a year late despite um, well, I'm going to say my best efforts, but despite an effort, <laughs> um, it's probably the best way of putting it. So um, I'm sure we'll all share some of those experiences and um, talk a bit about um, that later on. So um, I'm going to hand over to my comms team um, and still people are saying they haven't got any sound. So I don't know what's going on with sound. Um, some people can obviously hear, some people can't. Um, let's flip to the video then and see if we can work.
Hi Matthew, thank you for doing this um, Q&A with us today um, for our Chess Click and Connect on homeschooling. Um, it's really important for us to make sure that we show that this is something that dads are doing too. So thank you so much for, for coming along today to do this. Um, do you want to introduce yourselves first for those that don't know you um, and your two girls as well, please? Yes, we can introduce me the two girls and the puppy, how about that? Oh, brilliant, love a puppy. Um, so uh, I'm Matthew, I'm uh, the chief exec of NHSX and also the national director in NHS England for digital transformation. And I have been at home with, uh, hold on, just coming. Uh, this is Hi, Emily. Hi, Emily. Hi, Emily. Hello. And, and, and this, this is, is Martha. Martha. Is that Martha? Yeah. Hi, Martha. Uh, uh, the other daughter is suddenly a bit shy and is hiding from the camera. Okay. We, we, can say, we can say hi to her in a bit. <laughs> so, girls, you're being impossible. OK, we'll have to break in 15 seconds to take cupcakes out the oven. <laughs> Should we? We'll let you do that important thing first, and then um, okay. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get the I'll get the <laughs> I'll get the questions lined up. Right. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay. We'll just do cupcakes. Come on. Come over. What? You just have to do the first bit. And what do we have to do? Uh, so you can ask. You take it in turns and ask their question and then we'll talk about them together, okay? Uh, I'm not going to talk about them. Okay, you don't talk about <laughs> them. Emily, come on, you go in. I'm not doing this by myself. Hold it's on. your turn. Come on. Rachel, you read the first question. What do we usually do on a homeschooling day? So, there we go. What do we do? Um, well, I wake you up at 10 past eight. Um, then um, I normally go on to my first meeting. They're getting ready. They both have Zoom calls with their class at nine. Uh, and then the rest of the day, I'm trying to do meetings and they're mostly interrupting me. Yeah, one of them has several Zoom calls through the day. One of them just has a couple. Oh, brilliant. I, I bet it's really lively. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it can be it can be quite full on. So uh, let's see. Today um, uh, we had a meeting with Lord Bethel. Uh, so I was one end of a kitchen table. Emily was on the Zoom call having a story read to her at the other end. And Rachel was in the middle doing her her gym. Um, uh, and then uh, we had a meeting with uh, TPP when they were both roller skating around the kitchen. Uh, so it's quite full on. And the puppy as well. And the puppy as well. And the puppy doesn't get on with the other dogs at the moment. Uh -huh. So there's been quite a lot of uh, canine tension too. Uh, Emily, come and read the second question. Come and read the second question. Sorry, she's pretending she's trapped by the puppy. <laughs> okay. Second question. What is the, your favourite subject, no, favourite school subject to do with, with us and why? Great, and you can come and answer it. Um, so what's, what's the best, what, what have we done? Well, today we made cupcakes, but that yeah. wasn't really a school subject, was it? Uh, mostly my job is, uh, I help on the tech side. So I, uh, take her stuff and make sure it's on Google Classroom so her teacher can see it. And, um, then we, uh, what else do we do? We go through all her work. And make sure she's done it. But she's she's normally very good. Normally. Normally. <laughs> Most she's always very good. 
Yes, Martha's very cute, isn't she? <laughs> right. Next question. You, you've touched on it a little bit, but let's let's go for it anyway. Rachel, come here. Come here. Be careful. One of you look after the puppy. Stop her falling off. Um, what do we do to make things fun? Nothing. Nothing. There we go. <laughs> A damning indictment of my parenting. Um, the last one. Go on. I'll do the next one then. Come on. Uh, how do we avoid being on the screens all day? Well, personally, I can't because I have like one million thousand Zoom stuff a day. Yeah. Uh, and then my sister over there has two. Yeah. Uh, and the truth is they are, uh, they have their Zoom calls and then they do a bit of extra time on uh, Kindles. Uh, but by and large, actually, they're pretty good. They don't spend all the time on screens. They watch a bit of TV. They, uh, but they're pretty good about taking the animals out and doing stuff and doing crafts and things. So uh, I'm not at this point worried they're being spending too much time on screens. So, um, so thanks for Emily and Rachel for joining us. That was great. Um, and I'm sure we might see them see them again at some point. So I just wanted to ask, what has been the biggest challenge for you with homeschooling? So I think the biggest challenge is having the attention span and the time to do both the job and looking after the girls well. Because uh, the truth is, it's it's I mean for obvious reasons it's a busy job. Um, my office keep me busy. Yesterday, for example, was a really full on day. We had 16 meetings, so it's pretty back to back. And at the same time, I mean the girls do have need to make their lunch. We need to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, and need to make sure they're looking after the puppy and so on and so on. And then. They come in uh, with questions or the internet's gone down or whatever it is, and just balancing it all while trying to look professional and staying on top of stuff and uh, not getting irritated, I think is, is quite tough. I think the good thing is people are pretty tolerant at the moment about this. Uh, I think people understand it. Uh, by and large, when kids appear in, on screens and things, I don't think anyone thinks the worse of you for it. Um, my worry is if it happens too much, it goes from being cute to being uh, a, a, a bit annoying when you're having a difficult meeting. So moving on to the positives, what top tips do you have with regard to homeschooling? Oh, crikey, I'm the last person to give top <laughs> tips. Um, I mean, I think, so look, I am struck when I look at, particularly my younger daughter's Google Classrooms. I mean, it is really clear that some of the parents are being more conscientious than we are, and some of the entries, some of the homework, I suspect, is as much done by them as by the uh, children. And I guess my top tip is, um, I mean, I think the teachers want to see what the kids are doing, not what the parents are doing. So, I mean, don't make a rod for your own back by uh, expecting everything that has to be handed in to be completely perfect. Um, but look, I'm, uh, I'm far from a, a model homeschooler and I'm not going to presume to tell people how to do it. I think there's something really important in there though about not putting so much pressure on yourself and again that's something that we've really heard a lot of um and I think related to that how do you ensure that you're not too hard on yourself during this period it is tough actually and I mean I worry uh that we the kids are doing everything they should be doing uh, I worry, I mean, I particularly get upset with myself if I lose my temper or get frustrated because I hate doing that. 
Um, it can be really hard though if work tension is building up and home tension is building up, just keeping it all calm and uh, sorted is really difficult. So I think, yeah, I mean, just bearing in mind, it is a difficult situation. It's, I don't think anyone thinks it's easy and um, not beating yourself up for not being perfect, I think is, is reasonable. And uh, some screen time can be quite useful. Thank you. Um, so I've got one more question um, and then and then we'll see if there's anything else we want to tie up with. So last but not least, through the Flex NHS network um, and, and other research and generally, we do hear that men tend to have more difficulty getting flexible arrangements to support childcare um, or indeed other caring responsibilities because it's actually just not seen as their role. And there is often the assumption that it will be left for the mother to deal with. I just wondered, what do you think we can do to help change the perception of that? Yeah, well, I mean, it's true and it's ridiculous. Um, and in our house, um, it's uh, fairy cakes are ready. Um, no, no, they're not fairy cakes. OK, in, uh, they're not fairy cakes, apparently. They're cupcakes. Um, in our house, we didn't really have much choice because my wife fell ill and went into chemo. And so uh, it was clear that we weren't going to be able to uh, divide the responsibilities according to gender stereotypes. And so we just got on with it. Uh, and frankly, there's no reason why uh, uh, the, the woman has to do one role and the man has to do another. It's completely ridiculous, particularly in an environment where both might be working or the woman might be working and the man not. So. Uh, I think we just need to call it out and if people aren't, if people feel that um, men aren't getting the flexible working opportunities, then they need to call that out. And if we see sort of ridiculous gender stereotyping, we need to say it for what it is, because uh, there's no excuse for it. First cupcake. Tiny cupcake. Tiny cupcake. Oh, brilliant. I think we'll have to get that on the recording, the outcome of the cupcakes. <laughs> Mmm, that's really good. So I think we're going to try and play some other videos. Hopefully you can hear me. Sound seems to be an issue today. Um, but while if while Elise and Cara sort out the um, next round of videos, I just thought it was um, it was nice to sort of reflect on Matthew's um, recording um, there and how honest he was about the sort of struggles. I think we can probably all identify with some of the things that he was um, he was talking about. Um, and I think it's important to remember that it's not a it's not a doable job um, that actually trying to homeschool children and work and run a household and is more hours in the day than, than we have. Um, and so actually it's not something that we the expectation of ourselves um, needs to be needs to be reasonable um, because it's not something that, that can be fitted into into one day. I don't know if anyone else on the call wants to just sort of share some of their own reflections and um, how they, uh, you know, kind of how they how they are managing um, and how they are finding it, and also what might help relieve some of that pressure. If you do want to share, if you turn on your camera. I am Rowena. Over to you. Oh, oh yes, I, I was watching that man's video and I thought, oh my goodness, that's my life. Although my children are older, my son's been all through the trauma of predicted grades, missed places, reapplying and resitting. And 
um, because he has mild autism that has to be managed and I'm generally working with him beside me and we've got a routine and we have things in place but it has been really really hard because you know of course we're all professional we want to focus on what we're doing and we've managed to do it by having him working I fetched in the garden table big glass table and he sits next to me and works so every time he picks up his phone or his mind wanders I can see it um so I don't have to keep running upstairs Marina, I think you might have muted yourself by accident. Oh, I did. Did you miss all of that? Yes. <laughs> I'll start again. Um, I, I really felt for Matthew because we have the same thing here, as I'm sure many people do. My teenage son went through the whole horror of predicted grades, disappointments, resits, no tutors, no classes for resits, needing grades, missing college places. And as a mum, you have to kind of manage that. And it, it's been really hard to um, help him get along with all the attention that that needs. So we got in some tutors and we got in some career people from his college and we were on the path. But I work with him beside me. We fetched in a big glass table from the garden and um, he works beside me. But I feel for everyone because with young children, it's more full on, but with older children, it's more mental and, you know, trying to help them plot the path of where they need to be going and check in they're doing the work they should be doing, especially for children of his GCSE group, because so much rests on this, as it does with all children. But he missed his place at college because he missed the grades and he did the resits. And then they said, oh, no, you can't apply. You've missed it because we told you not to apply. And all those things, you know. So I, I work with him sitting beside me um, and it helps me to focus on what I'm going to do because I don't have to constantly run upstairs or go into the kitchen to see what he's doing. And I stuck a, a routine on the fridge door <laughs> just to help me focus because the hard thing, I don't know if everyone feels this, is but... Um, when you are really focusing on what you're doing, and our job tends to be stages and complications, if you stop because there's an emergency, you have to think yourself right back into where you were, carry on, and then something else happens. But we found that routines on the fridge door and going through the pain of enforcing routine has actually made things a bit better. Thank you. I think that's a really important that's a really important point, isn't it? And I think. For, for me that that kind of you know when so I can when you've got kids at home and you're the routine at least structuring your day does give a bit does give a give you a bit of a chance to at least sort of feel like you can you know even if it's time sort of small tasks and small achievements that you're ticking off something it's just so challenging to do that when um when everything all the demands are kind of flying in at the same time I'm going to cut in a second to the next round of um videos but I think there's someone in the chat has posted about flexible working and about how the pandemic has forced a different conversation around flexible working. I think it's um, probably just important to, to note that, um, that that working at home with children and trying to homeschool them as well as do your job isn't flexible working. It's, um, it's working at home whilst trying to do several other jobs as well. Um, and I think we have to be really careful and clear about what we want to take forward as good practice from this pandemic around ability to, of people to remote work and to work at home and have flexibility in their day and to do a little bit of crossover with childcare and work um, too and to work in a different working pattern that suits you but actually you know working or trying to fit, fit all of that into one working day and particularly I hear from lots of people who are homeschooling their kids and then working until you know three four o'clock in the morning and then cramming in a couple of hours of sleep um to that's not sustainable um, and it's not a practice that as NHS employers we should be um supporting in any way too so that is part of the conversation for today really about um how can employers set reasonable expectations and I think as employees, we take a lot of that kind of guilt on about what, how we're contributing, how we're working, our, our presence at work and also our presence at home. 
um, and point of the sessions like these really is to try and um, is to try and sort of have those conversations out in the open because we all face similar pressures um, and we all face similar emotions I should think um, uh, in response to those pressures. Um, so I, I would love to have more of you speaking after the next round of video so please uh, please do share your experiences if you're comfortable to or ask some questions um, and do use the chat I know we've had a couple of people saying why am I getting this chat on my machine um, but um, I'm assuming that they've muted their, the chat now so people please do use it um, and Elise I'm going to hand over to you for the next set of um, videos thank you Hi, I'm Eve. I work in NHS England and Improvement in the South West um, and I'm going to share a few thoughts on how I'm trying to manage this strange and tricky time of home working and homeschooling. They are definitely not tips. I wouldn't presume to give anyone tips, but here's what's working for me. So I'm trying to keep my expectations really, really low as low as they could be and then a bit lower still, um, really prioritising what's important, what's really important, brackets, that is not cleaning the house, um, and just really trying to be kind to myself about the things that are not happening at the moment. Um, I'm really trying to re relax some of the rules at home or better still actually co-create some rules with my children. I know that sounds a bit um, strange, but they are so much more likely to I'd be happy and stick to things if they've created them themselves, I find. So that's really helping me and us. Um, we are having plenty of treats and rewards for just getting through the day. It doesn't need to be anything big that we're celebrating. Just, you know, it was Wednesday and therefore we're doing something nice this evening. Um, little things to look forward to feel really important. I'm trying to be really honest with myself and with everybody else about how hard this is, about the good moments and the light moments and the fun moments, but also the real challenges. And to be really honest, I'm being pretty ruthless and brutal um, about just staying away from what doesn't feel honest at the moment and staying away from things that are not helpful and, and not real about how we're all having to manage life and struggle and cope. Um, and then I guess it sounds really cliche, but I just think this is super hard and I am trying really hard to be really kind to myself, really kind to my children, uh, really not put them under extra pressure and just hold on to the fact that, you know, a day is just a day. And if it was a good day, that's wonderful. And if it was a not so good day, you can go to bed and start again and hopefully the next day will be better. Sending everybody really, really good wishes. Right here. It's just the one that we're talking about. Okay, all right. Thank you. So you can see the um, ambient noise that I have to work with um, when working from home. Um, on one hand, you're listening to an audio conference. And uh, on the other hand, you're also having to address your daughter's needs. Um, case in point. And the, the reality of it is, is that uh, this is the challenge that's faced by every parent that is working from home. Um, it, the number of distractions and interruptions um, just do not make for a conducive um environment by which you can think either strategically or even tactically in that uh, you've got so many um different channels by which information is being delivered to you whether that's notifications on your phone notifications on your pc your children um asking for a glass of water or a snack um, and then when you're trying to homeschool and you're teaching a laptop and you've got notifications popping up left, right, centre, then um, it just means that you are literally lurching from meeting to meeting, making a decision uh, time and again that is difficult. It complicates and slows down and inhibits the best decision making and it is tough for people. I'm fortunate that I've got my own office um, here. I can lock the door. 
uh, myself and my wife take it in turns to homeschool the kids. And basically, I've I've booked now half day holidays so that I can um, uh, tutor them. But the, the reality of it is, you still get interrupted. You still get escalations. I mean, today at one o'clock, I've already had a number of escalations this morning, some very, very serious matters. Um, and you're trying to do that and balance uh, the educational needs of your children. And that is very, very difficult. So I think every single parent that works from home and, and tries to master that is uh, doing a fantastic job in very difficult circumstances. And I think we all have to accept that we can only do as well as we can do in these circumstances. Hi there, my name is Tom and I work at NHS South Central West and I'm also dad to two primary school aged kids. So I've got Emily, who's 11 and Anya, who's eight. And like everyone, I found the whole homeschooling thing really hard. And, and one of the biggest struggles I've had is around guilt. Um, so guilt that while my kids need me to help them, I'm in a, in a Teams meeting with work, guilt that I'm not as on as I could be at work, I'm letting my team down, guilt that I'm not giving them enough attention, my kids, to help them, um, guilt that I'm just their dad, not a teacher, guilt that their education is suffering and, and they're missing out. And I do think a lot of people feel like that. And I take comfort in a funny sort of way, knowing that I'm in the same boat as everyone else, floating in this massive sea of guilt. And I also think it's important to remember we're all doing our best. And the children are resilient creatures that they'll bounce back from this. And I think a really big plus for me is I've had so much more time with my kids than ever before in our lives. And I've, I've enjoyed that. Um, so that's been a plus for me. So what have I learned um, beyond how to add fractions and the difference between passive and active sentences, which I'm learning at the moment, I'm going to Google it. Um, for us, routine really works. Knowing that they're structured um, helps me as much as, as them. And we always begin with a walk. All the walks, the walks, so many of them. And then the day structured into to short bursts of activity with, with loads of breaks. So we start at 9.30 after our walk, finish about 2.33, and knowing that there's that structure in the day really helps. And plenty of snacks in between to keep people going, keep those blood sugar high, um, low blood sugar, we all get tempers fraying. Um, and I prepare the day ahead as much as possible, printing out the worksheet, setting up Zoom calls, etc. Um, one thing I did do at the end of last year is bought by a Chromebook. Um, we couldn't afford a laptop, a Windows one, but a Chromebook, 180 quid has been brilliant. Other than that, I guess it's a case of just hanging on in there, keeping positive. When you cap the first lockdown, we've done God, so many months of this and what's a few more, a few more weeks, he says very optimistically. One minute, Angela, just, just on the phone. Be one minute, all right? Yeah, 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 no, great. It's a client situation at the moment. So I put the TikTok video in at the end um, because that it feels very reflective of my household. <laughs> it's sort of calm. Um, other half who uh, has been working at home um, for the duration of the pandemic because he normally uh, works abroad. Um, and um, and me just sort of generally much more hysterical on every front, um, particularly trying to work at home as well on the, t at the times I do work at home and I'm not in the hospital. Um, so I think they were a great mix of experiences in those in those videos. And I think there's probably stuff that resonates with all of us. I thought David raised a few issues that are interesting ones to explore. Um, one about having your own office. Um, so actually, you know, we know that what, you know even just working from home, let alone homeschooling from home, but working at home um, is really dependent on having you know a setup that enables you to work effectively from home. I find when I work from home, I'm invariably sitting at a toddler-sized table, either in the in the um, conservatory, where, which is like the kids' playroom, or just borrowing a desk from one of my children because we haven't got any kind of office set up, um, which again brings its own challenges if everyone's at home trying to learn in different rooms and actually how do you maintain a work a working day if you're hopping around different rooms, especially with multiple children, maybe at multiple schools on multiple Zoom um, or Google Classroom events. And the other one thing he mentioned, I think briefly, was about using annual leave to tutor to, to school kids and, and, and to tutor them and actually feeling like you because you can't balance because you cannot do your job and homeschool your kids and try and do everything else all in the same time window it just can't it just isn't 
possible about how you then um, how you then manage that and actually taking annual leave. Lots of questions have been asked um, of us over flex platforms about furloughing um, for NHS staff and of course the furlough scheme um, doesn't apply to um, public services um, and so um, if people want to know a bit more about that please do put it in the chat and we'll try and find um, some more resources and more information for you um, on that too and there's a bit about the indefinite sort of period um, of these homes you know we, when we went into the first lockdown um, that there was it's it you know, went on for more weeks than perhaps what we expected and we're in the same situation again of not really knowing when this might end and that's quite challenging I think actually if you've got an endpoint you can work towards um, it's it feels easier than having a sort of an, um, a, a, a time that is indefinable that you need to keep sort of battling <laughs> your way through. Um, but um, I think I would, it'd be really interesting to hear from you and to share about what 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 would help? What do you think? What are the things that you're that 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 will help would help you either from your employer or you know more generally in terms of support? What are the things you think would help, or what are, you, are things that you find helpful that you can share with other people? So again, if you um to speak, if you just pop your camera on and um and raise your hand, and then we can come to people um in turn. And I'm hoping someone's going to say something because I haven't got any tips to share. <laughs> Stevie, do you want to put your camera on? I'm a um, trainer here at the Trust in elective care and when I, at the moment I'm doing both so I send my eight-year-old son to school um, some days and then some days I have him at home and I found that it, when we're delivering a training session that can be two hours long sometimes two and a half hours it's a long time for an eight-year-old not to have any attention so what I've found is that at the beginning, I will sort of say, you know, my situation, I'm working from home, I do have my young son here, you know, kind of apologies. And he will come in and out saying, you know, can I have a drink? And and it's and I think it's just about like I try and get everything ready on the side. So I'll have some snacks there and say, right, these are the snacks you can have. These are your drinks, etc. But I, I do think it is really difficult um like I say when when you have got a session that's a couple of hours long and you and you do feel the guilt of saying go away go away you know for such long periods of time so so I think it's just about explaining to people and I think all of us know that we're in the kind of same boat in people that I found haven't got children young children they're still understanding of the situation that we're in so you know I think a lot of people are understanding and yeah, I think it's kind of explaining your situation before you start just saying, you know, I am working with my children. Please do bear with me and then go on mute, speak to your child, etc. Yeah, thank you. I think that's really important. And you're so right about the length of time, the expectation of being of kids being able to sort of amuse themselves, especially younger children. It's just um, it's. And I find if I want my eight year olds to you know, amuse themselves, then I'll lose him to a fortnight, which I know is probably age inappropriate um for, I could you know he could he could do that for sort of hours on end without any interruption but that's not the way I want a parent um and um it's really it's really it's really tough um but I think you're right you know actually people are quite understanding and more so now and that probably is a, a real positive from this experience that people are much more understanding and forgiving of um of people trying to juggle lots of things at home I wonder how long that will last and about whether or not we will keep that sort of positive um and permissive and more accepting culture um, post pandemic and it will be interesting to see um, what happens and also how we try and support the good um, the, the sort of good in, in that I think it's important that we do retain that um, that element um, of this kind of work that actually you know we all have lives outside of work um, and we don't we don't just sort of leave them at the door when we walk into the office and we don't leave them at the door if we walk into the office that is our actually our kitchen table and that still goes on all around us. Marina shall I come to you next you've got your hand raised is sorry it's me again um i did want to say that in a way this whole thing i think has humanized us in a way that we're not used to because we have our work persona we take that to work and we operate in it and when we're at home um i don't know how many people like me just love it when we see other people's children and pets 
because it is just such a, another um, part of that whole experience. And to me, um, I, I called a company yesterday and they said, our oh, people are working at home, so you might hear children and pets. And I kept thinking, oh, I hope I do, I hope I do. And luckily he had a parrot. And that was just really fun. And it just made things so much. And I just love it, you know, when you see people's cats and teenagers and children. And I'm thinking, in a way, that has humanised us in a way that I don't think any of us ever expected. And in a way, it's brought us closer together because the work persona now, for a lot of us, is a thing of the past. We don't have that anymore. All we've got now is who we are. And I think for a lot of people, it's actually quite nice. I mean, I love the one with Matthew, with the puppy and the daughters. And, you know, and I just think it's given us a, a benefit that we perhaps wouldn't necessarily recognise. I think that's a really, really fascinating and important point, actually. And I think from a um, from a sort of leadership perspective, it's also sort of flattened leadership um, hierarchies as well a little bit, I think, because actually you're seeing in more of people as people rather than as in, in the people as a role. Um, and you're right. It's really I think it's a really. It, and, and I think it's it is a great equalizer because you realize that no matter what job you do, you're all you're all kind of you know trying to do the same you're sort of trying to do the same stuff at home and you're trying to juggle the same things and you know that might be more or less difficult depending on your personal circumstances but it's still um people are still doing it so and it's something that you don't normally expect is it you look at someone else and it, i think this is particularly it's not really a pandemic issue but you always i think as a parent look at other people and think they're doing a better job than me they're doing they're doing so much better than i am we're actually we're all just trying to get we're all just trying to get through <laughs> we're just trying to muddle through um so yeah eve I've, you've got your hand raised can i come to you next yeah, yeah. Hi, um i'm eve i've got three children mine are six, uh, seven and um, 11 and 13 and um, I'm also using a bit of a mixed model. So my seven year old is going to key worker provision three days a week and my older two children um, are staying at home. So, you know, there are there are quite a lot of interruptions. And one of the things that's made a real difference to me in the last few weeks is sort of a reminder of reminder to myself that I don't need to apologise for the circumstances that we find ourselves in. So what used to happen is I'd be in meetings with people and then one of my children would want a snack or they need a password resetting on an app or something else. And I'd be forever saying, oh, I'm terribly sorry. You know, I'm terribly sorry for the interruption to the people on the other end of that Teams meeting. And it sort of, I don't know, it, it felt like it, I wasn't being very kind to myself. And also it wasn't necessarily a reflection of the situation that we find ourselves in that you know that's not something that's within my control so so i've started not say not saying sorry i suppose you know just acknowledging oh um you know i just need to pause for a second to help my child and then coming back to the meeting so you know being being polite and acknowledging my colleagues time but not not saying sorry all the time and that's helped me to feel a bit more positive about the fact that i'm doing my best Thank you. That is that's so I think that again hugely important and actually that sort of not you know not saying oh you're not apologizing all the time is I think every again I think we can all that will all resonate that will resonate with all of us. I mean I have to say my, my children invariably don't ask her for anything like apart from asking for a snacks incessantly, it would be like I've done a poo really loudly on the meeting then or one of them recently wandered in because they were going for a bath and I had a very late meeting um and do they just sort of wandered in naked. So I was like just don't stop going back out. <laughs> So yeah, but um, but yeah. So I just have to start that out. Just uh, <laughs> um, Veronica, you've got your hand raised. I come to you. Oh, we've got Nikki as well. I'll go to Veronica first, and then um, Nikki, who's just joined us. Um, but Veronica, did you want to come in first? Hi. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to share a couple of the things that have have saved me this time around. The first lockdown was incredibly difficult for me, and my I've got two girls. I should say. Uh, 13 and 15 and that comes with all the the attitude and um, eye rolling that you'd expect for that age group um, and that's the, the biggest problem that I have uh, there's two things that have saved me this lockdown one is the zoom lessons that they're now on um, interactive lessons with their teachers on a full schedule and so they have a timetable and we were drowning without that last time and the other thing that saved me is is thinking about myself 
and for me that means going for a walk every lunchtime I make sure it's not I'm a trainer and my um, training sessions get scheduled for me by my admin team sometimes I have time and sometimes I don't but the majority of time when I can fit it in I'll take an hour's lunch break and make sure I first go for a walk put some music on sing along and look really stupid walking down the street as people could probably hear me and that's really saved me this time around and just trying to put aside that guilt that we all feel as parents and, and actually say, no, I need to make sure I'm OK in order to be able to help my kids. I think that's a really important point as well. And that we talked a bit about this at another session that actually if, unless you unless you plan time in for yourself, it doesn't happen. Um, it just gets lost. So unless you make that a priority, um, it's just never is one. Um, and so actually finding a bit of time in the day, um, you know, and I know it's finding more time in the day that already hasn't got enough time in it. Um, but it's really it is really important and the more we can try and promote that as employers as well the better I think. Nikki I'm going to come to you just we're just sharing a few experiences and we've heard from various different um, people in different jobs about how they're sort of managing the home schooling and um, working juggle and I know you've been doing a bit of that as well do you want to just <laughs> thanks, introduce thanks yourself? Thanks for having me Kate and apologies for coming late to the session and sort of diving in but it's it's really nice to hear some of this because I think as someone's put in the chat bar we're not alone we're all we're all trying to do versions of this and I I was doing um a talk as so I'm often doing talks from home I'm lucky to be in the office today um but often doing talks from home I was doing something last week um and it was to the medical directorate I'm sorry I haven't even introduced myself sorry Kate I'm Nikki I'm a GP medical director for primary care NHS E and I and um, so I was doing a talk for the medical director sort of briefing them on the vaccine program and I was you know fully in my flow and my nine-year-old who's homeschooling next to me my 12-year-old's up in his room uh, which just about makes it manageable but she had a music lesson and she had to sing along with the class and so I'm talking and I'm describing the vaccine program with great confidence and she's singing and she's getting louder and louder because she can't make herself loud heard so then I'm getting louder and louder as well we're both going really really loud and um and obviously everyone you know um I'm sure everyone on my end was laughing um certainly on on on, on Naya's end uh, she just kept she shooting me evil evil looks as a nine-year-old is now perfected um and I th I think it's just it is really messy is my reflection um and I think for me it's really unpredictable and um, the one thing the one thing above everything that's really helped is for both children um I've emailed both teachers and just said and I've just been really honest and just said this is really difficult right now for me and my husband so they might be homeschooling but they don't they don't have a parent around um they don't have somebody who's gonna mop up their work at the end of the day or at the weekend um and and just being really open about that has has helped actually because people aren't um, expecting the kids to have completed all the things that are being kind of um, asked for or if particularly for the nine-year-old if they've got an activity that is a bit more complex than they can handle on their own the teacher knows that she's not going to have an adult necessarily right there to help um, and and I do think that's helped and then kind of reflected that back particularly to the nine-year-old who's very conscientious that you know what it's okay you're not going to have everything done in the way that you would do at school and she's managing it a bit better because she knows that the teacher isn't expecting something of her um uh the 12 year old sort of doesn't mind so much anyway um and and I think the point that um I think it was Veronica just made that kind of level of of, of forgiveness is really important self-forgiveness um and one of the things that we've baked into the diaries now is at some point between that one hour lunch time that the kids have i might not have the whole hour off but we'll have half an hour where we go for a walk even if it's around the block because we both psychologically need that fresh air and then um and then they can grab some food and 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 sit and just have a bit of a moment um and a, and a bit of a break um but i think the the walk for me has been as much for me as it has been for the kids um and i, I suppose i'll stop on a, a really amusing kind of, well i think it's quite amusing so my daughter can now recognize any minister by voice um except she gets a little bit confused by their names. So I, I'm in this kind of awkward position now where I'll be on a kind of ministerial call and they'll be now in the background going, is that Matt? <laughs> and then the other minister's going, no, I'm not Matt. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's definitely messy. Um, but don't, I think we, I think we need to not apologize for it. It is hard and it is messy, um, but that's okay. And um, recognizing that, you know, 
we're definitely in this together is important um and that we're you know spaces like this to support each other is is really important as well so which is really why i wanted to be able to join so thank you kate, thank for, you, kate for having me oh thank you thank you so much for joining um and I think you know we've lots of us have shared the sort of you know, the kind of messy bits, and I think this and and the, how difficult it is, and I think there's probably a bit of we of also recognising how much we're all doing, and you know there's people lots of people on this call that are you know working astonishingly hard in really in, integral jobs, and you know still managing to homeschool their kids or you know and just keep everyone going and that is that's phenomenal so it's really it's really tough and it is messy and it's really challenging in lots of different ways um but i think there is that recognition that actually people are doing a people are doing a phenomenal job too and actually it's um just sort of you know keeping going and um and being able to to recognize that is really important is really important anyone else on the call um any kind of questions reflections um it's been quite a quiet call actually um in terms of questions so i'm sure that there must be um must be someone with a, a lurking question so anyone anyone any sort of hands raised i can see an old hand i think from veronica but anyone else want to come in with a question or a reflection or a tip um or a you know a, a kind of an ask from us as in, as nhs employers that you would that would make your lives more easy um, and would help in in the sort of juggling the homeschool work, um, sort of juggle and struggle as we keep calling it. Um, any hints and tips? Anyone else on the call? Please pop your camera on or raise your hand or pop it in the chat. Um, and there are some resources and I'll pop them in the chat and I'll put them online afterwards um, that NHS England have put in place um, to support parents um, and they're, they're sort of again finding the time I know to go and look at another resource is often the barrier um, to accessing, accessing some of this stuff, um, but it is there, um, it's there to be used. So there's lots of different things from kind of pacey, um, the ch early years childcare support through to um, an app called Parenting, I think, or Parents um, Link um, for London parents. And there's also an app called, if you've got young, much younger children and you're kind of preschool sort of age, um, called Happity. Um, who um, have a huge list of childcare classes and um, stuff that's happening online um, for younger children, the kind of mums and, well, not mums, that's really gender stereotypical, but parent and um, sort of tot classes that you kind of, I haunted massively when I was on maternity leave and just went to every single thing that was on, um, but they're all online on that app and they're quite handy too. So Asha, you've just joined as well. Do you want to, um, and we saw you, we saw you on video earlier. But. <laughs> um. Hi, yeah, I'm so sorry I'm a bit late. I've been dealing with a bit of a personal emergency this morning, but nice to sort of drop in for the last five, ten minutes because I know we've, there's been a lot going on to sort of plan this webinar. Um, this might have been covered already, so sorry if it has, but I think there's there's something about, um, I think if you're in a leadership role, uh, you know, making space for these discussions to happen so that, you know, people, people not feeling alone. And I know that's something Nikki's tweeted about before, um, but I think that was a big take home for me because, you know, we, we might have some people feeling actually quite vulnerable in their teams and, and not feeling like, you know, they want to become a problem and talk about this. So I think anything we can do to create that space within our teams, our organisations is really helpful. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's that is really important, and that sort of safe. I think as we just sort of reflected earlier that, um, you know, if we, I know we, we look at we might look at our leadership teams and think oh, they're not doing they're not they're not they're not having to juggle all this stuff, but they are. Um, and so actually, you know, talking about it and um, and sharing experiences is really powerful in its own right because it makes everybody feel a little bit less alone and a little bit like they're they're, they're the only person in the world doing this stuff. Um, and the more we normalise these conversations, the more um, people are able to ask for help and support. Um, and um, and that can only be a good thing. Nobody should be struggling with this um, stuff on their own. Um, there is lots of help and support available. Um, just in the last kind of two or three minutes, I know we started a bit early, so people have been on the call a bit longer than they would normally be. Is there any any questions, any comments, any reflections? It's your last chance to put your hand up and, and ask. <laughs> um, otherwise, I've done more talking than I would normally do. Um, so we've got another session next week um, and, and we haven't decided what that subject is going to be yet. And then we're going to have a break over half term um, and, and then we'll resume these sessions on a Wednesday um, through um, through lockdown. But oh, Nikki, you've got your hand raised. Oh, oh sort of, you were rounding up. Sorry, so I didn't want to cut across that. Um, I guess I just wanted to mention one other thing that probably has come up, but um, food. Um, uh, I, I, I really struggled with giving myself permission 
to make to to just let the kids eat really simple boring stuff for a while because I just I don't I, I, so, so it might be different things for different people but for me it was food that was just I was I was getting a headache every day thinking I, I can't feed them three times a day and do my job and get them to survive homeschooling and then work out what I'm eating and actually for me it was just you know whatever that one thing is that is sitting there you know laundry's piling up or you know it's, it's it'll be a bunch of different things for different people um but just <laughs> just give yourself the permission to say actually for a little while it's going to be frozen stuff or ready meals or you know whatever your thing is soup and a roll you know whatever it is that's okay and I know that sounds that might sound really silly to some people but for me the minute I sort of thought crap it actually doesn't matter they're fine they'll be absolutely fine that that was a really um that was quite pivotal for me I'll be quiet quiet oh no thank you that's a really nice reflection actually and you're right it's um it's all those little things isn't it that um that that do well they're not little things they're big things because actually they take up a huge amount of brain space and it's that sort of mental load stuff isn't it that you're constantly that kind of constant running commentary and list in your in your brain um and um i think we all have those that kind of yeah laundry is mine definitely the sort of endless cycle of washing like i'm just i'm like clutching my head and <laughs> just thinking about it um but we'll we will wind up now um thank you for the comments um and if you have any questions if you've been um if you if you've not wanted to ask in the chat then you can always email us um or you can message us over our social media platforms via flex um and 